One of the necessary features of lens replacement is that we ensure that we get the maximum vision possible for that human's set of eyes. And what I mean by that is not just distance vision, but also intermediate vision, which would be things like the computer, and near vision, which is things like reading. So when we're talking about near and distance, These two things require a different focal point. You may wonder, what is a focal point? Well, in optics, a focal point is just where the sharpest point of focus is for a specific optical system. And so, if we were looking at, say, a lens, uh, I'm gonna, we'll do distance first here. If we're looking at a lens, uh, and uh, it is looking at a tree, and we'll say this, say this is a distance here of 20 feet. And there's a tree over here that this guy wants to see. The focal point of this lens, we need it to be so that when light rays coming in from this tree, which will be almost parallel to each other as they come in, that they get focused into a perfect tiny little upside down tree on the retina. And so that is what is required for the power of this lens. The focal point of this lens would be way off in the distance. Uh, technically, uh, it's just kind of the same as infinity. Now, for this near lens, oh, I'm trying not to draw an arrow through my face. How about that? that for a near lens, so if somebody is looking at, say, a, uh, I'm trying to draw a book here, see how that, how that works. Yeah, it kind of looks like a book, a little, and a little bit like the feathers on an arrow. If this guy is trying to read a book, and say this is only 18 inches away, then the focal point of this, this book has got light rays that are coming out like this, and they've got to get focused perfect into a tiny little book on the retina. Uh, and so when, with, if this lens is trying to look at this book and see it clearly, something about it has to be different if it is going to try to look at a tree and see it clearly. And that's because the focal point for this lens is very close and it cannot see really clear far away. Um, that is what it is to be nearsighted, to have a focal point that's up close. So when we're talking about lens replacement, we have this conundrum of how do we get both near and distance vision. There are two ways to do it. I wish I could say that I'm going to just pick the top two out of the ten ways to do it, but there are two ways to do it and two ways only. The first of those is called a multifocal lens. Now multifocal lenses have gotten better and better over the years. I am not against them. Now just saying that alone probably, <laughs> probably already sounds like I'm kind of <laughs> against them, but I'm not. Uh, and I still put them in people's eyes and I used to do it more in the past. Um, the way that multifocals uh, work is that a multifocal lens, so uh, we shorten multifocal as uh, MF, MF, IOL is uh, the full. A multifocal lens, it has rings to it, concentric rings. And then there's these little arms that come off like this, these little haptic arms. And so the way a multifocal works is there's near and distance rings as you're looking out. So you are always looking through the distance part, even when you're reading. And you're always looking through the reading part, even when you're looking in the distance. And so the way that you are purchasing your distance and near power is with the, the currency of your contrast sensitivity. That's not a problem for a lot of eyes because there's actually more contrast sensitivity, more sharpness on the table than is technically necessary in order to be, see, be really happy with what you're seeing. Um, the problem is if you don't have enough extra sharpness and contrast sensitivity to give any of it up. And in those cases, what will happen is you, you can be 20-20 for distance and 20-20 for near with just kind of smudgy, unsatisfying vision. That can still be fixed with something called a lens replacement. It's technically called an IOL exchange, an intraocular lens exchange. But as you can imagine, having to go through that surgical procedure is pretty frustrating if you've already gone through a lens replacement. And that's my main Thing with multifocals that doesn't keep it keeps me from recommending it just willy-nilly to everybody that comes into the office is because every now and then there's somebody that won't feel like their vision is good enough for it and then we do an intraocular lens exchange 
Um, multifocal lenses can be a great option, but the amount of diagnostic testing and the discussion with your doctor, it really does matter when you're talking about uh, a permanent solution to your vision. So that's option number one for fixing near and distance. Option number two is something that we call blended vision. Now blended vision is not monovision. Uh, and if you don't know what monovision is, God bless you, you're lucky, because most people that do know what monovision is uh, don't specifically like it. And the reason is, with monovision, what you're doing is you've got one eye that's focused way off in the distance, and you've got your other eye focused up close, and never the two shall meet. Uh, they are mono, uh, each one is doing its own thing. The problem with that is, uh, if your brain isn't cool with that. And for uh, most people, uh, depending on the study that you read, it's anywhere between 30 to 50% of people that don't do well with it. If your brain is not okay with that, you now have this permanent issue where it feels like your eyes are doing different things from each other. Your brain wants to use both eyes together, just like it wants to use both ears together. It's very annoying to have one ear uh, that still won't pop after you get off the plane. Uh, it, it, very, it throws you off balance. And that tends to be the problem when people do have a problem with monovision. So now that I've said what blended vision is not, which is not monovision, what is it? Blended vision is creating a difference between the two eyes for distance and near that is small enough that they still can work together. It's the same way as your ears work really well together, even though they're on opposite sides of your head. Uh, it gives you spatial and, and stereo sound because uh, your ears are working together to create this one blended soundscape around you. Uh, no one ever thinks, I heard that with my right ear more than my left ear. They just think to look over there because that's where they heard it. With blended vision, it's the same idea. We're, we're creating this stereo vision because both eyes are contributing. And so the distance and the intermediate and near are meant to be this blended uh, exchange from near to far using your right and left eye, not individually, but using them together. The satisfaction rate with blended vision in my experience and in our clinic um, is well over 99%. And so it ends up being the one that we recommend for most people. Not that multifocal is inherently bad. It's just that blended vision, uh, we really do have uh, more options to tweak that and get it just right for most people. In all of this, the thing that's the most important is getting a customized personalized opinion on this after all of the appropriate diagnostics have been done. And your doctor can do that with you.